97% of all startups fail, and only 2.5% of VC-funded ventures will become a unicorn, reach that billion-dollar valuation mark. Statistically speaking, only one person in our classroom in the Stanford MBA program will become and found a unicorn in their lifetime. Will it become you? Or you? Or you? Or me? <laughs> As it happens, I've already been a unicorn, the musical kind. For 16 years, I chased perfection on the piano. I won international music competitions. I studied at the most prestigious conservatories and I gained fame in my home country, Sweden. There is nothing in the piano repertoire that I cannot master. Now, my days as a concert pianist are in the past, and today I'm chasing that entrepreneurial unicorn in the present. Now, as I have completed my transition from music to business, I couldn't help but notice important parallels between the two. It takes a grand vision incredible hard work and constant improvisation to build a unicorn, whether the musical or business kind. La Campanella is known for its captivating melody and a thundering climax. It's a four-minute piece that only the most proficient players can master. I learned La Campanella age 14 when I devised a formula that would enable me to challenge the most difficult pieces out there. I have perfected this formula over the years, and it has helped me stay on top of my game ever since. Now, to conquer La Campanella, I envisioned a grand vision of how it would look, how it would sound. But how did I go from this to this. For inspiration, I would listen to the recordings of my all-time favorite pianist over and over and over again, and I would picture myself playing the most wonderful rendition of this piece. Next, what did it take to make my vision a reality? a detailed plan of action. Being able to play thousands of notes in a minute, coordinate the two hands, and memorize all the music would take careful thinking of how it would learn each of these things and when. So I set milestones. When, for instance, could I expect to conquer this piece? In two, three, four months? I also divided this piece into bite-sized passages. focused on nailing every single passage one day one at a time. Dividing the workload into concrete, actionable steps made learning La Campanella so much more manageable and less daunting. And after a while, I was ready to put together all of these passages into one cohesive interpretation, bringing me that much closer to my grand vision. Similarly, some of the best entrepreneurs out there start our journey with a grand vision of how our future venture will look like. What's the impact we want to have? How will we change lives, organizations, the world. Sebastian Siematkowski, co-founder of the Swedish unicorn Klarna, started his, vision, started his journey with a crystal clear vision of how his innovative, buy now, pay later business model would disrupt the old-fashioned retail finance industry. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is a company like Klarna, built on a solid foundation. Sebastian's grand vision inspired by his hero, Richard Branson of the Virgin Group, enabled him to hire key employees who shared his values. Ignore the multiple skeptics telling him his idea would never work, 
and attend hundreds of investor meetings, often taking no for an answer with a smile on his face. But of course, just having a grand vision isn't enough. You need to put in the hours. For instance, as I was learning La Campanella, I went through every single note, rhythm, and tempo in the score, and I internalized it. I didn't shy away from putting in 12-hour days for days on end, rehearsing every single note to perfection. And so on. At the expense of my fingers and arms, <laughs> sacrificing countless evenings and weekends. But by the time I was rated to perform for an audience, I knew this piece inside out in a way that I could literally play it with my eyes closed. There are no shortcuts when learning a piece and neither are those when building a successful company. During the first year of starting DoorDash, a unicorn, and today the largest online food delivery company in the world, full-time students Tony Zhu and his co-founders worked around the clock, interviewing hundreds of business owners and delivering the first 200 customer orders door-to-door -door by themselves, gaining first-hand knowledge of what worked and what didn't. Putting in those extra hours and being incredibly close to every single product detail enabled Tony to map out all of the consumer pain points and identify his product market fit. Had Tony not done this, DoorDash as we know it might not have been born. Just imagine not being able to get that late night restaurant delivery to your house. But of course, just having a grand vision and working incredibly hard isn't enough either. You can't brute force the learning process. Improvisation is needed to unlock creativity and uncover things that we didn't know we were capable of. For instance, there were so many times when I was, as I was learning La Campanella, I just would get stuck on a passage. Perhaps my fingers just wouldn't work at the desired speed. Or maybe I was simple out of ideas. I didn't know how to proceed, but I needed to find a way to make it work. So I'd let my fingers loose. Or play around experimenting. I'd also consult with other pianists on what had worked for them, all in the spirit of unlocking some sort of new insight. And surprisingly, it worked every single time. Equally, we entrepreneurs must consistently th think outside of the box to keep our businesses alive and growing at a fast pace. Daniel Eck, co-founder and CEO of Spotify, takes pride in crediting his curiosity for his success. When Daniel first set out to build Spotify, music piracy was rampant, and no one had figured out a way how to build a business model that worked for music streamers, artists, and record labels. Daniel and his co-founder Martin would get together for daily brainstorming sessions. Their willingness to constantly challenge their assumptions and bounce seemingly ridiculous ideas off of each other led to them uncovering groundbreaking business models such as Spotify Premium. Such improvisational attitude has made Spotify the global leading music streaming business for the past 15 years and counting. So, there you are. The next time you're contemplating that billion dollar idea, just remember, grand vision, incredible hard work, and improvisation. And you might just have your unicorn, a long lasting success that few others can only dream of. Just think like a pianist.